He leads me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. When you become a believer, your spirit is made right. But sometimes, the soul doesn't get the notice. It has a hole in it. Due to things that's happened in the past, hurt, abuse, molestation, but we want to speak to you today and tell you that God wants to heal the hole in your soul. Some people's actions are not because their spirit is wrong, but it's because the past has left a hole in their soul. May this wisdom help you get over your past and remind you that God wants to heal the hole in your soul. I have my sister Leandria here. She's going to help me share this wisdom and tell this story. Cause all I seem to do is hurt me Hurt me Lord, deliver me Cause all I seem to do
He leads me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. When you become a believer, your spirit is made right. But sometimes, the soul doesn't get the notice. It has a hole in it. Due to things that's happened in the past, hurt, abuse, molestation. But we want to speak to you today and tell you that God wants to heal the hole in your soul. Some people's actions are not because their spirit is wrong, but it's because the past has left a hole in their soul. May this wisdom help you get over your past and remind you that God wants to heal the hole in your soul. I have my sister, Leandria, here. She's going to help me share this wisdom and tell this story. God, deliver me. Because all I seem to do is hurt me. you tonight but somebody may be crying but I come to let you know that God can make it all right <laughs> you let me It's impossible to see But God is going to work it out If you just believe Remember this one thing While you're going through If God delivered Daniel Guess what? He'll do the same for you, 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 you. Hey. No matter what's going on. No matter what's going on. He'll make it all right. Said it in his word. Oh my God. 
somebody who will be strong tonight. Now we come to let you know. All you got to do is hold on.
This is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. I said, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. We can say this together, oh magnify, yeah, oh magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. Truly it's an honor, it's a blessing to be in the place today. Every second Sunday we honor our youth. Come on, put your hands together for our youth. They lead us in our worship. Truly, we thank God for you all coming in the building today. We thank God if you're watching by way of Facebook Live. We would ask that you can like, heart, share, and comment. Like, heart, share, and comment. This is New Revelation Missionary Baptist Church located 3140 West 21st Avenue in Gary, Indiana, where our pastor is Reverend Edward C. Turner. Give him a hand clap of praise. Our pastor is not here with us today. He's on an assignment in Detroit, Michigan, at the Partakers Church in Detroit, Michigan. But we have our very own Minister Burns. Let's show us some love. Let's show him some love. Let's show him some love. This is our call to worship. This is our call to worship. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. For the Lord is the great God, the great king above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth and the mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his for he made it and his hands form the dry land. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is our God. And we are the people of his pasture, the flock under his care. Let the church say amen. amen. Our youth will come and provide us with the scripture and prayer. Following that, we'll have praise and worship in Jesus' name. Good morning, church. 
Today I will be reading Psalm 66. Make a joyful noise unto God, all ye lands, to sing forth the honor of his name. Make his praise glorious. Say unto God, how, t- how terrible art thou in thy works. Through the greatness of thy power, so thine enemies submit them. Slaves, un- Slaves unto thee. All the earth shall worship thee and shall sing unto thee. They shall sing to thy name. Selah. Come and see the works of God. He is terrible in his doing toward work the children of men. Amen. Amen. Can we please bow our heads in prayer? Father God, thank you for letting us come to church unto this day. Thank you for letting us, thank you for letting the, letting the youth come and praise your name. Thank you for letting, um, thank you for letting other people come and preach the word and then other people come and sing into your name thank you when we when we um leave church can we um travel through grace and mercy and people who are still coming to church let them come here in a safe in a um, safety matter and i hope we have a really good day in church in jesus name i do pray amen Hallelujah. I said hallelujah in this place. Is anybody excited to be here? Hallelujah. All right. Well, the Lord said, you remember that song says, our God is an awesome God. He reigns. So they got a little spin on it. But if you want to stand with us, you're young in the spirit, right? Hallelujah. So we're going to get ready and say, our God is an awesome God. All right. Say, he reigns. 
give you glory in this place, God. Well, come on, lift your voice and tell them he reigns. Somebody say he reigns. today. Hallelujah.
Let's give them another hand. Truly, we thank God for the youth on today. It's prayer time. This is another day, another opportunity to love, to give, to do it all over again. So we're going to have corporate prayer. Pass. Me not, oh, just to say, Amen. Hear my humble cry as Mother Mitchell prepares to come to pray. I call only to not pass me by. Now, my great grandmother just turned 98 the other day. She said, with praise. When we think about all of your goodness, your mercy, and your tender love that you gave us, we can't help but praise your name. We realize, my heavenly Father, when we look up and we see the sun rise, the sun set, we know that there's nobody else like you. You're God all by yourself. And my heavenly father, sometimes we get discouraged when we listen at the news and we see our children killing each other. We see the crime in our community. But when I looked up today, and so I you singing to you. That gave me hope. And Lord, I thank you for our youth. 
today. I ask you to bless them in a special way, my Heavenly Father. There's so much danger in the world today. Sometimes you don't know if you're coming home. But Lord, you are our protector and our God. And so, Lord, we're asking you to protect our children. Keep them from killing each other. Show them that there's love in the world. And we got to demonstrate love for each other. Help us, Lord, to be what you want us to be. Help us to show love to each other. Let our community show love. Let us show that Christ is still alive. Help us, Jesus. Help us, Jesus. Help us. Oh, Lord, my Lord. My God. Bless our children. Bless our people. Bless our city. Bless our state. Bless our nation. When we see we're going every way but the right way, help us, Lord, to go the right way. Send your Holy Spirit to each one of the Christians so that they can demonstrate the love that you gave them. That is the only way that we can grow. That's the only way that we can save our nation is when we love each other. When we show God in our lives. When we show our children that they are loved. When we show our children the right way to go. When we show our children that you are the answer. Jesus. I just pray, Lord, bless us. Bless the churches that are open in your name. Bless the minister as she get ready to preach your word. Let it enter into our hearts. And when it enter into our hearts, let us show action behind it by showing love to one another. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done so far. When we look back over our lives and we see how far you have brought us. But Lord, we know we got a long way to go. And the only way that we can go that way, the right way, the righteous way, is through the blood of you. Cover us with your blood. Cover our nation. And we will forever give your name the praise, the glory, and the honor. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Anyhow. Hallelujah. Come on, show these babies how we worship God in this place. Come on, can anybody just worship the Father for a quick moment? That we tell him that we love him, that we honor him, that he's nobody is like him. Come on, send it up in this place. Hallelujah, we send it up in this place. We send it up in this place, God. We lift our voices to you and say that we magnify you. We worship forever. We love you forever. Hallelujah.
Let's keep that going. Lord, 
They said, I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever, Lord. Lift your voice and say, I love you forever. I love you. Forever. I love you, Lord, forever. Is that anybody else's sentiment? I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you. We love you, Lord. Forever, Lord. We lift high your name. Then the baby said, I'll worship forever. I'll worship. Forever. Can we just sound like one big choir? I worship forever. I worship, I worship forever. forever. High and lifted up. Yes, hallelujah. I worship forever. I worship forever. I worship forever means never ending. Lord, that means I won't stop, I won't cease. I worship for because I got a right to worship, I got a reason to worship, I got a right to praise Him, I got a reason to praise Him. Hallelujah, we worship you, Lord, worship forever. I worship you forever, Lord, I worship you. This is just a little bit of intimacy with him. Just, just you and him. I don't know the cost of your praise. I don't know the cost of your worship. I wasn't there when he poured you up out of the mud, the mud and the mockery clay. I wasn't there. Only you were there. So this is your moment. There's victory in your worship. There's victory in your praise. Hallelujah, Lord. Forever, Lord, I worship. Oh, hallelujah, Lord, we worship. Last time, we worship you. Forever, Lord, we worship you. Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift up the name of the Lord, hallelujah. It's an honor and a privilege to stand before you this morning, New Revelation. I love y'all so much. It, this month makes a year that I have been a member here at New Revelation, and I love it. I love y'all, and I thank God for giving me this opportunity to be amongst such great people. You all are amazing, and I love y'all, and I thank you. To our pastor in his absence, I pray blessings over him. Let's give it up one time for our pastor as he ministers the word in Detroit. And I promise not to be before you long, but there is a word of God for the people of God. In the book of Luke, chapter 7, verse 36 to 39. When you got it, say go. And one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment and stood at his feet behind him weeping and began to wash his feet with tears and did wipe them with the hairs of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with ointment. Now when the Pharisee which had bidden him saw it, he spake within himself saying, this man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is that toucheth him, for she is a sinner. For the sake of a title, I have called this the cost of your oil. 
the cost of your oil. Father God, in the name of Jesus, how we love you, how we thank you, and how we praise you, oh God. We thank you, Father God, for this day, Lord God. As I hide behind the cross, oh God, I ask that you would have your way, oh God. In Jesus' name, Lord God, whatever flesh agenda is present, Lord God, I denounce it, I counsel it in the name of Jesus. You speak through me, oh God, with dignity and clarity, oh God, with boldness and conviction, oh God. Father God, let them see you and hear you and not me, oh God that a sinner's life is saved and a believer's life is changed in your son Jesus name amen the cost the cost of your oil so when we begin the text we we have Jesus who who has just been invited to join the Pharisee Simon for dinner and in case you all are not all that familiar with who the Pharisees are they are a group of people who who are devout to the law they taught the law, but they did not live by the law. In fact, in Matthew chapter 23, Jesus, as he was talking to the multitude and to the disciples, he says to them, he said, listen to what they say, but don't do what they do because they are hypocrites who want to be seen. And of course, I'm paraphrasing, but it, do you know anybody like that? <laughs> So being that Jesus was what they called rabbi, a great rabbi, which is just another word for teacher, being that Jesus was a great teacher, it was an honor, it was honorable for Simon the Pharisee to have someone such as his caliber to come and sit at meat. Sitting at meat is just having dinner. He was having a party. So it was an honor for Simon. It was notable for Simon. Notice what I'm saying. It was an honor for Simon. It was notable for Simon to have someone of Jesus's caliber to sit at his table for dinner. However, Simon's hospitality was less than honorable. Can you turn me down just a smidget? I feel like I'm screaming at myself. So <laughs> Simon's hospitality was, was a little bit less than honorable. See, in that time, there were certain cultural expectations that had to be followed whenever you had a guest in your home. Didn't matter who the guest was, there were certain cultural expectations that needed to be followed. Those expectations were, one, you would wash your guest's feet because they're walking in sand, and so you would wash the dust off of their feet. The second one was you would greet your guest with a kiss on the forehead or on the cheek. The third one was you would anoint your guest's head with scented oils, typically olive oil. But neither of these things did Simon offer to Jesus, who was his esteemed guest. All of these acts show gratitude and appreciation for the presence of the guest in your home. I said acts. These are acts. Pastor talks about this a lot when he's teaching to us about worship acts of worship these things these cultural expectations were acts Simon didn't give them so while at dinner they are interrupted and a lot of theologians like to call it a divine interruption they are interrupted by this woman who walks into the house an uninvited guest if I can set the scene for you back in those days when they had parties like this the doors was always open when you had a great teacher such as Jesus's caliber to come in the door of the house of whomever was hosting the party was the door was open so that anybody can come in and glean from this person. So this woman walks into the party and the Bible says it in Luke seven and 37 that she is full of sin. In fact, she is, she's known in the city as a sinful woman. It doesn't necessarily say what her sin is. They don't really let us know, but a lot of theologians like to argue that she was a prostitute and that she was sleeping around with people. And so that's why she was known. It's not, again, it's not stated in the Bible, but this is what is believed. So she's a sinful woman and she's known in the city for all of her sinful ways. And as we later on in the text, when you go home and read it, which I hope you go home and read it, Later on in the text, we find that this does not sit all that well with Simon. See, I invited Jesus, but I didn't invite you because I don't, I don't associate myself with people of your kind. So you wasn't welcome here. Simon didn't say that, but these are Simon's thoughts. So I can imagine Simon in his haughtiness and his arrogance and his frustration at this woman who so boldly disrupts his party. 
I know I'm not the only one that has ever been in a church service before and someone walked into the church doors who did not look like we thought they should have looked. They didn't sound like we thought they should have sound. And immediately, whether you meant it or not, you. Who's that? What's she in here for? Maybe her skirt ain't long enough. Now I know she can come in here looking like that. Maybe his pants ain't pulled up all the way. I not know he ain't come in here looking like that. Maybe he a little drunk. He a little high. He maybe they don't smell all that great. And we immediately, we immediately go into judgment. We don't know what they went through before they walked in the doors. We don't know what, what caused them to come into the house. But I believe, just like this woman, that they came in the house on for a reason. So I want to encourage somebody in the room this morning. You know, sometimes you got you got to be bold enough to step out of your norm, your mediocrity, your, your state of complacency, your state of ordinary to get something extraordinary. This wasn't an ordinary thing for this woman to invite herself to someone else's party. She knew she wasn't welcome. So this wasn't an ordinary thing, but on boldness and on faith, she stepped out. She had a purpose. This woman had an agenda when she walked into this house. When she entered into the room, she had a singular focus. The Bible says it in verse 37 that she learned where he would be. So this means that everything that she did in this room on this day at this party was purposeful and intentional. Is there anybody in the house that came in this room this morning on this day with purpose? And intention in the presence of God. Her focus was not on anything or anybody else. Her focus was on Jesus. She didn't care about the other people in the room. Simon wasn't the only Pharisee in the room. She didn't care. She had an agenda. She was after forgiveness. I'm not, I know I'm a sinner. I know what I did. So I'm not here for you. I don't care what you think about me. I have a purpose and an intentionality. I've got an agenda. You see, during that time period, sinners were not allowed to participate in the synagogue. They couldn't go to church. Imagine that. Sinners could not go to church. They weren't welcome. But I could imagine, I could, I could just imagine that she was there because the Bible said it, she heard. So that means she's heard him before. I don't know exactly what she heard him teach. I don't know exactly what she heard him preach. Maybe she saw some, she learned that he was going to be there. And because he's in the room, guess what? I got to get in the room. Because wherever he's at, I got to be there. She was aware of who she was. She was aware of what she's done. So she knew I got to get in the room. So again, she came with an agenda. She, she came with a purpose. I dare to say that, that because I'm sure that, that all of us in here at some point in our lives have experienced walking into a room and there is immediate judgment. Maybe they don't say it, but immediately they look at you and they cast judgment on you because maybe they know something about your past. And so they're holding you hostage to your past. But listen, baby, I came to tell you, you better hold your head up high. You better hold your head up high and look straight ahead and keep focus on your agenda and your goal. Because the Bible says it in Romans 3 and 23 that we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. There's not a person in this room that can cast judgment on another. Jesus said, I come not to condemn the world. So upon her entry into the room, the room grows still and silent. And the sound of judgment resounds in the room. The temperature of the room, and it rises high with internal indictment and disgust and dismay and questions and wonders and judgment. Who is she? Why is she here? Ain't nobody welcome you, girl. But despite her surroundings, she keeps pressing. Despite what she thinks people are thinking about, she already knows because she's heard it before. She already knows because they said it to her before. 
So despite what's happening around her, she keeps going. She keeps pressing her way. She keeps walking towards Jesus because she came with intention. She came with a purpose. She came with an agenda. That agenda, that purpose, and that attention, that intentionality was forgiveness. I didn't come because I wanted y'all to like me. I didn't come because I wanted y'all to see me in my Sunday best. I didn't come for anything. I came for Jesus. Too often in life, we miss our moment. We miss our beat because we become distracted by the noise and the voices of the naysayers. In this life, you've got to learn how to tune out the voice of the naysayers. Tune out the voice of objection. Tune out the voice of rejection. You never make it to the finish line. If you keep paying attention, what everybody else got to say about you. Listen, can't nobody in here judge you. You... You don't know what I've been through. I don't know what you've been through. Just last night, some of y'all was doing some stuff that you ain't had no business doing. So there's no room for judgment. Young people, because it's, it's Youth Sunday. Listen, there's going to be some rooms that you're going to enter into. And the people that are already there are going to wonder who, who gave you access. Who told you that you can come in here? Who, who granted you permission? You don't belong here. Listen, listen, you keep your head up and you keep walking with intentionality, with purpose and with an agenda. Because the steps of a righteous man, that's what I heard in Psalms. It says that the steps of a righteous man are ordered by God. So, so, so what did she do that brought her to this point? We don't know. The Bible don't tell us. But what did she say? We don't know. The Bible don't tell us. Well, what did she experience? We we don't know that either. Because the Bible didn't tell us. But what we do know, two things. This is what we do know. We know that she knew who was in the room. (laughs) Don't miss that. We don't know what brought her to the room. I don't know what brought you here this morning. But what I do know is that you knew who would be in the room. See, you got to move it, move a little bit differently when you know Jesus is going to be in the house. You got to prepare a little bit differently. I just said it a minute ago that she came with an intention. That means she prepared herself because she knew that Jesus was going to be in the room. The second thing that we know about this woman is that she was a sinner ready to serve. That's the difference. She was a sinner But she was ready to serve. Well, how did she serve? I'm glad y'all asked me. Let me tell you. While this may have been Simon's house, while this may have been Simon's party, Simon's event, Simon didn't offer up any acts of gratitude. Simon didn't offer up any acts of appreciation. Jesus said it later on in the text that she's done more to greet me, Simon, than you did in this your own house. So, this woman, she, this, this sinner, this, this unclean woman, this, this unwelcome guest, her heart's posture was that of a servant. So we, we got to change how we position ourselves before God because too often we're, we're at God like this. Yeah, it looks like, it looks like worship, but we're at God like, can I have, can I get? We genie God a lot. And so we come at God not offering, but asking. We want an exchange for God, but we ain't giving him nothing back. But this woman's heart posture was that of a servant. This brings me, Miss Brenda, to my first point. She came with an offering. You gotta, you have to come with an offering. The offering was her worship. We know what the acts of worship, what we see with the baby. I don't know where she went to. The baby was singing and she was waving her hands. That tickled us pink, didn't it? That's an act of worship. But what this woman offered was real, true worship. How so? Let me tell you. I'm glad y'all got all the questions. Her offering to Jesus was her worship. From the moment that she entered into the room, she was worshiping Jesus. The Bible says that that she came in weeping. She was weeping. Now, now let let me set the scene again for you. When they had parties such as this, they didn't sit at a table like we normally sit upright at the table. They recline on couches, okay? So Jesus was reclined again. This woman had an agenda. She had an intention. Jesus was reclined on the couch. So his head 
This was the table. This was Jesus head. Jesus feet was out here. So her intention, she had an intention. She had an agenda was to come into the house and anoint Jesus head. But she couldn't get to his head because his head was up against the table. So the Bible says it in verse 38 that she was weeping and she washed his feet with her tears. The Bible says that she dried his feet with her hair. Listen, listen, listen. You've got to get pretty low. <laughs> You've got to get pretty low. I can't get to your feet from up here. I got to humble myself. She humbled herself in the presence of Jesus. I'm not worthy to be in this room. I am unclean. I am a sinner, but I came with intentionality. I came with an agenda and I came with a purpose and I am going to humble myself. Hallelujah, Jesus. I kind of, whoop. hallelujah, Jesus. She humbled herself in the presence of Jesus, even in her seemingly unworthiness, her uncleanliness. She still came to worship. It don't matter what I'm going through. It doesn't matter what I felt. It doesn't matter what I've seen. I still came with the heart's posture of worship, worshiping my savior, worshiping the man who's going to forgive me. See, she didn't know nothing about the cross yet, but she still came with a heart of service to worship. This is what real worship looks like. Yes, this is hallelujah. This is great. This hallelujah, I lift up my hands. That's great. But this, what this woman did, this is real worship. How so? See, 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 listen, wait a minute. Let, before I get there, she didn't wait on nobody to pump and prime her. She didn't need a praise and worship team. She didn't need anybody to read scripture first. She entered into the gates with thanks. With thanksgiving, she entered into the courts with praise. The Bible says it in John 4, 23 and 4. But the hour cometh, my God. And now is when the true worshipers, this is true worship. Now is when the true worshipers, they shall worship him in spirit and in truth. The father is seeking. This is who God is looking for. God ain't, listen, you can come all day long and do this. Hallelujah. All day long. You can do that all day long. But if your heart. Y'all listen. I'm going to tell y'all something. Facebook and YouTube. Listen. This might mess with somebody. You ought to be afraid of saying. God knows my heart. That's a dangerous thing to say. Because yes he knows your heart. And if your heart is not pure. You ought not to rest on that. She came ready to worship. God is seeking this kind of a worshiper. The Bible says in John 4 that this is who he's searching for. He's not looking for the person who got the longest skirt on and the, their, their shirt buttoned all the way up to their chin and you can't breathe and you're hot and you're sweating. He's not looking for that. It, your appearance is not what matters. It's your heart. It's your heart. He's looking for this kind of a worshiper. Is there any true worshipers in the house this morning? Your heart's posture. God, I'm not coming to you asking you for things and asking you for stuff. God already gave you that stuff. Y'all, anybody here a parent? And when your children come to you asking you for what you've already given them access to, don't this bother you a little bit? So God said, look, stop asking me for stuff that I've already given you access to. I don't care about none of those things. I want your heart. That's what matters. She came with a worshiper's heart. In the room where she's not welcome. In the room where don't nobody want her. In the room where they're judging her. She came with a heart of worship. And John says that that's who the father is after. That's who the father is seeking. So this brings me to point number two. Point number two says that you, you've got to be ready to be broken. <laughs> you got to be ready to be broken. What you talking about, Lorraine? Thank y'all. Y'all got good questions. This is what I'm talking about. The Bible says that not only did she offer him a kiss, not only did she weep and wash his feet and dry it with the locks of her hair, but she had a box. 
an alabaster box. And for those of us that are unfamiliar with what an alabaster box is, let me, let me break it down for you. See, some translation calls it a box. Other translations call it a jar. In this time period, oils and ointments and perfumes were put into such jars for specific reasons. These reasons were to maintain its potency and the, the true identity of the contents that were in the jar. That went over somebody's head. I'm going to say it again. It, it, the jar, it was specifically made to maintain the potency of the contents inside. The true identity, the validity of the contents inside. Maybe you'll catch that later. The authenticity of the contents on the inside. So depending upon the size of the opening of the jar, it determined how expensive the contents were. So the bigger the opening, the less expensive it is. The smaller the opening, the more expensive it is. This jar that she had, had a small narrow neck and it was sealed up with wax. <laughs> Track with me because we about to go somewhere. <laughs> It was a small narrow neck and it was sealed up with wax. So that means you, you can't get it out, right? The only way to get it out, you got to break it. Don't miss that. The only way to get what's on the inside out, it had to be broken. Somebody going to miss it, but maybe you'll get it on your way home. In order for God to use you, God, God put some wonderful things inside of you. God has placed some amazing things inside of you. When God created you, he created you with purpose. He created you with purpose, for purpose, and on purpose. There's some things inside of you, but along this journey called life, we get caught up in some stuff, caught up in some things, caught up in some people, caught up in some places, and then we kind of push those things. We bottle it up, and we put it in a jar. And we put it to the side. And then all, the only way to get the contents, to get that good stuff, all the great things that God has placed inside of you out, you've got to be broken. Is there anybody in the room? Lord, break me, oh God. Because God can't use you until he break you. Because everything that's on the inside, i got to get it out. And I can't get it out the way it is now. i got to break you. i got to break you so that you can be used. This woman was ready to be broken. She was ready. She wanted to be used. Wish I had a witness in here. She wanted to be of service. She wanted God. She wanted Jesus to use her. She, she wanted to. So I'm willing. I'm willing to be broken. Remember I said that the smaller, the smaller the hole, the more expensive. This jar, these contents cost a year's wages. You don't... <laughs> You don't know the cost of the oil in my alabaster box. You don't know what it costs me to be here. You don't know. Listen, Simon, the Pharisee, I know you think you know what you know about me. I know you think you've seen what you've seen about me, but you don't know what it costs me to get here. That's why I so boldly interrupted your party. That's why I entered into the room with, with a praise. I entered into the gates with thanksgiving and it's caught with praise because you don't know the cost of the oil in my alabaster box. You don't know what I've had to go through just to get here. You don't know the things that I had to do. You don't know what I've seen and what I've heard. This is why. And so, God, I'm ready to be broken. Break me, oh God. Break me and make me over again. Break me, oh God, and use me for your service. I want to be broken. The breaking means, look at that picture. The breaking is it's setting free. Because listen, <laughs> listen, when you break it, guess what? It doesn't go back to its original. I don't want you to miss it. When you break it, it doesn't go back to its original form. Break me, oh God. Break me, oh God. Everything that I've got inside of me that is for your benefit and for your good. Break me, oh God, and get it out of me. I want to be broken, God. I've been in captivity for too long. God, break these chains. The Bible says, whom the sun sets free. I think she knew it, that there's an indeed freedom if I get to the feet of Jesus. Break me, oh God. That's the kind of freedom that I'm looking for. I don't want to just be free. I want to be free indeed. 
I dare somebody in the room to shout out, break me, oh God. I dare you on Facebook to type it in the comments, break me, oh God. It's bringing me to point number three. After she was broken, she poured herself out. Because now I have access to all the good stuff that's inside. So now I'm going to pour myself out. The Bible says that she wept. She kept on weeping. She kept on pouring out. She kept on crying and kissing the feet of Jesus. She kept wiping his feet with her tears. She took everything that she had and she poured it out on the feet of Jesus. Is there anybody in here willing to pour yourself out on the feet of Jesus? Willing to let go of everything? I'm giving you all that I've got. I think Anita Baker sang it. Giving you the best that I've got. Is there anybody in the room willing to give God the best that you've got? God, break me. Break me, oh God, so that I can pour it out on you, Jesus. This, this, this shell that I've been living in, defiling it, doing what the world said I should do. This mind that I've been thinking with defiling it, thinking the way the world says that I should think. This mouth, oh God, this mouth that I've been speaking with, cussing him out, her out, saying things about my children, saying things about my spouse, this mouth that I've been defiling with. These eyes that I've been looking at stuff that I shouldn't be looking at, looking at people that I shouldn't be looking at, looking at places that I shouldn't be looking at. These feet, Walking into territory that ain't mine, that I shouldn't be walking into. Going places that I shouldn't be going. These hands, God, that I touched stuff that, that didn't belong to me, that I shouldn't be touching. This heart, God, this heart that's loving things that ain't got nothing to do with you. The treasures ain't got nothing to do with you. Break it, oh God. Take it and break it, oh God. Change me and make me over, oh God, so that I can pour out on you, Jesus. So that every good thing that you put inside of me, I can put it on you, Jesus. So that now when people like Simon see me, they no longer see me the way they saw me. But now they'll see me the way you see me. Hallelujah, Jesus. I've been teaching it to my Sunday school class. That because of the righteousness of Jesus, yes, there may be sin all over you. But because of the righteousness of Jesus, God no longer sees the sin on you. Now what he sees is the righteousness of Jesus. So break me, oh God. So that when I'm walking, all those people that were holding me hostage to my past, that only knew me for my sin, so that when they look at me, they no longer see the sin on me, but they see the blood of Jesus on me. Hallelujah, Jesus. And, and listen, listen. I know she didn't know nothing about the cross. And I'm, I'm getting ready to close. I know she didn't know nothing about the cross. But the reason why I don't mind giving an offering, the reason why I don't mind being broken, the reason why I don't mind pouring out is because he did it for me. There's a hill and it's called Calvary. There's a cross that they nailed him to. They pierced him in his side. He did it for he was the offering. He passed out 42 generations and he did it for me. So I don't mind pouring out on him because he poured out for me. I don't mind offering up for him because he offered up for me. I don't mind being broken for him because he was broken for me. Is there anybody in the room that's willing to be broken? Is there anybody in the room that's willing to be broken? I decree it, I declare it over your life right now. That the chains that kept you in bondage, that the chains that has kept you in prison, break now in the name of Jesus. Break now in the name of Jesus. Break now in the name of Jesus. Somebody came in here angry. Somebody came in here with a suicidal mind. Somebody came in here ready to cuss everybody out. I break that right now. I bind it up in the name of Jesus. If you're ready to be broken, if you're ready to be poured out, lift up your hands before the Father. Break now in the name of Jesus. Because he did it for us. He did it for us. Over 2,000 years ago, they beat him until you couldn't recognize him.
baptism. They ripped his beard off of his face. They flogged him. They hurled spit and insults at him. They placed a crown of thorns on top of his head. They beat him all night long. He went from judgment hall to judgment hall. And he did it for me. He did it for us. A nation of people that wouldn't even claim him. A nation of people that would deny him. He did it for us. He poured out when they pierced him in his side. And the blood came streaming down. Guess what? That pouring out, the power that was there then, that tore the veil from the six o'clock, the six o'clock hour to the nine o'clock, that power, that same saving blood washing power, it still is active today. That same power, that same power, it can heal your heart, it can heal your mind. That blood that was poured out over 2,000 years ago. It still has power and it still works today. And guess what? It's still available. It's still available. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. It's still working today. Is there anybody in the room this morning? We're going to open up the door. Maybe you don't know this Jesus that has sacrificed, that has been broken, that has poured out. And guess what? He didn't just do that. He did die. But guess what? On a third day morning, he got up. For moments like this, he made a room at the cross. So if there's anybody in here or on Facebook that you don't know this Jesus, you don't know him, but you would like to. The door is open if you can come, deacons. The door is open. If you don't know this Jesus, but you want to know him, you're tired of living the way you've been living. You're tired of going the direction you've been going in. I'm after forgiveness, God, forgive me. Forgive me, God, I want a relationship. Maybe you do know him. Maybe you've, you've been in relationship. But God, I slipped. I fell. I fell by the wayside. And I'm here with an agenda. I'm here with intentionality. I'm here with a changed posture. My heart is different now, God. I want to be made new. Break me, oh God. Make me, oh God. Pour me out, oh God. I surrender to you, Jesus. Is there anybody with a heart of surrender? Is there anybody with a changed posture? The door is open. You no longer have to live your life like that. You no longer got to live in bondage. He's available. He's available. He's available. He did it for you. He did it for you. Hallelujah, Jesus. On the hill there's a cross, on the cross there is blood for me, for me. He did it for you. On the hill there's a cross, on the cross there is blood for me. For me on a hill, there's a cross. On the cross, there is blood, and it's shed for me. For me, we see that there's none on a hill, there's a cross. But listen, the altar is available. Cross, there is blood. For me. Maybe you just want prayer because you're tired of living the life the way you've been living it. And if you're sincere and you want to be broken, if you're sincere and you're ready to offer up, if you're sincere and you want to be poured out, the altar is available. 
Step outside of your norm. Don't do church as usual. Because the cross was for you. That should have been you carrying that cross. That should have been you judged all night long. That should have been you whipped all night long. But he did it for you. On the hill, there's a cross. On the cross, there is blood for me. Is there anybody ready to give up everything? Anybody ready to let it go? On the hill, there's a cross. On the cross, there is blood for me. And the blood still has power. The blood still has power. There's a cross. On the cross, there is blood for me. He did it for me. He did it for me. If that's your heart's cry, just lift up your hands to the Father. On the cross. There is blood for me. This is the universal sign of surrender. That means I'm giving it up. On a hill, there's a cross. On the cross, there is blood for me. So the mindset that I had when I came in here, I'm not leaving here with the same mindset. Cause on the hill there's a cross, on the cross there is blood for me. And God, I thank you that you did it for me. On the hill there's a cross, on the cross there is blood for me. Father God, we thank you. God, we thank you for all that you've done. We thank you for the sacrifice. We thank you for everything that you gave up just for us. We thank you for being broken for us. We thank you for being hung on a cross for us. We thank you that you didn't say no. We thank you that you did it anyway. We thank you that the bitter cup was not passed. We thank you, oh God. We thank you that you were hung between two thieves. We thank you, oh God. We thank you for what you did on the cross. So for moments like this, that we can come before your throne and lay ourselves out, saying, God, I surrender. God, I give myself away to you so that I don't get up the way that I came, so that I can be different in my mind, different in my heart, Different in my walking, different in my talk. To the one that won't say it, I'll say it on their behalf. God, free me from my sin. Thank you. Break the chains, oh God. Break the chains, oh God. Break the chains on my mind. Break the chains on my heart. Break the chains, oh God. Because I don't want to be the same anymore. Free me now, oh God. I want to be set free, oh God. And I'll give you my worship. I'll give you my praise. I'll give you my honor. Because of what you did on Calvary. It was done for me. For that we honor you. For that we praise you. For that we glorify you. Because of what you did for me. On that hill, on that cross, the blood that was shed. We thank you, God. And we praise you in this place. In your son Jesus Christ's name. Hallelujah, Jesus. And it's for me. For me. For me last time. On a hill, there's a cross. On the cross, there is blood for me. For me. Hallelujah. Wonderful power. 
Let's give Minister Burns another hand clap of praise. We want to thank Facebook Live and YouTube for tuning in. And as Pastor would always say, don't let the day make a difference in you, but you make a difference in the day. May God bless you and may God keep you. The best nation in the world is what?